about. And we, and again, one of the great advances is the use of self-help groups. And this is, has become a, a cultural factor of great importance. And although AA has been around uh, for quite a long time now, for uh, more than 50 years, uh, it's only been in the last decade, uh, even uh, NA uh, has been around since, uh, I think it started in something like 1938, which was a surprise to me that uh, Narcotics Anonymous has been around for 40 years, uh, but uh, an imitation of, of AA. And it's very complicated how these things work, but they have become a significant factor in the culture. And where before there was an absolute split between professional attention, where uh, psychiatrists and other uh, treatment people were trying to uh, give people the sense that if they worked out their bad, the stuff I talked about earlier, their bad early relationship with their mother or this or that, then they want, wouldn't want to use intoxicants. And what everybody who's in trouble with intoxicants wants is that they're willing to stop use if they could only stop wanting to use. And that's what they want extinguished. And to a certain extent, the professionals at some time were promising that. If you worked out your bad difficulties, you'd stop wanting to. It all comes from your real longings for your mother or whatever it was and something like that. So that AA, the self-help groups, who really saw this as, you know, the, the sense you're never recovered, you're always recovering, you always have to deal with the craving. You're never free of it, but if you join this subculture, if you get with us and you get caught up in all the different aspects of the program, then this helps you uh, provide a certain way of looking at the world and looking at yourself and so on, of admitting your helplessness and uh, where we can do something, uh, but we can't promise you that it will go away. Well, you can see where those two were entirely antagonistic. And the self-help group saw the uh, professional treatment uh, providers as really antagonistic to their efforts. Now again, I think that's been a great change. A great deal of professional effort is now going into getting people into self-help groups and organizations, that they're no longer at odds, I mean, on rare occasions, but mostly it's now seen as a synchronous organization. And this is occurring more and more as more and more professionals get better trained to, in the use of intoxicant understanding. You know, it's still rare. Think of how few psychiatrists really are, have devoted a lot of their attention and time to intoxicant use. Few psychologists, not so many social workers. I mean, all the professional groups, it's changing, but it's changing slowly, and that too is an educational process.